Welcome back to my garage. If you saw the live stream, I said I was gonna play with the carb for at least a couple of days trying to adjust it properly before I started uh, doing something else to the engine. After giving it some thought, that would have been a good idea with a rotary valve with this massive crankcase volume. But I'm running a reed valve at the moment, so not a good idea. We're talking case volume of uh, 370 something cc if I can remember correctly. 1.18 to 1 compression ratio, which is really low for a reed valve. We need to bring it up to at least 1.3 to 1 to make this work with that reed. So plan now, take off the cylinder, make a stuffer. My plan is a 3D printed insert that will fill in the outer walls of the transfer ducts, giving them less volume. That won't be enough though, we'll have to pull the case also and uh, make something that sticks down into the, into the case to take up more volume. I started working on a 3D printed insert yesterday. Decrease the volume here and also stick up into the transfer ducts and uh, decrease the volume there. I also designed a new t-shirt yesterday, Two Stroke Suffering. It's been suggested by so many people. Two Stroke Suffering in that dreadful dip into a black hole in the power band. This will bring primary compression up to about 1.3 to 1, which should be better for reeds. It's a really tight fit, we'll need some sanding to make it fit better. Might even need some heating to have it conform. It should be the right shape. Quite a challenge to model something with okay inside shape. will still fit the cylinder and be able to drop down in here. I don't know if it will be able to drop down there yet, but it should be. I had to do some grinding to this piston to get it off because there's no uh, notch for uh, me to grab the circlip. I'm running these C circlips, which are the safest circlips because there's less chance of them being popped out by the wrist pin. But uh, I'll have to grind a little notch here now to get that circlip out of there. Usually these pistons come with a... Let's see if I can find one. Usually these pistons come with a little uh, notch there. Not sure why they omitted that on this uh, this one. I went straight to sanding without even test fitting is because I had this failed print yesterday and uh, I knew it wouldn't fit. Didn't seem too off though, so I didn't change the model. A little bit of adjustment needed here. and now probably stuck. I'll keep on sanding and grinding until it fits both the case and the cylinder and I'll bring you back. I've encountered a little fuck up in my uh, design here. 
the actual transfer parts were made separate from the rest and then attached in the CAD software. But I should have cut, cut it one last time with the cylinder. You can see here this bridge interferes with this. I think we'll just cut away the C transfer insert. It doesn't make much of a difference anyway. Then I won't have to redesign and print a new one. I feel the fruity variety pairs very well with rum. This video is sponsored by Magic Spoon. Cereal reinvented. While working in the garage, I usually don't take the time to go inside and make a sandwich or something. Get something to eat. That will change now, because this is so simple and easy. And high quality, 0 grams of sugar, 45 grams net carbs, 13 to 14 grams of protein per serving, and only 140 calories per serving. Which is great when you're trying to recover from last year's Christmas. Daytime, I think I'll go with the peanut butter with milk. Nighttime, either the cocoa with whiskey or the fruity with rum. Tastes like a cartoon from the Caribbean. Works great plain. As a quick snack also. Their variety pack comes with four delicious flavors. Fruity, cocoa, peanut butter and frosty. Click the link below to grab a variety pack of Magic Spoon cereal and try it today. Be sure to use the promo code 2 stuffing at checkout to get $5 off any order. Or go to magicspoon.com slash 2 stuffing Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed by a 100% happiness guarantee. If you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. So click the link below or scan the QR code on screen and use the code 2 stuffing for $5 off any order. Or go to magicspoon.com slash 2 Two-stroke stuffing and save five dollars today. Thank you, Magic Spoon. The piston skirt in my CAD model is a little bit shorter. I'll have to. Give it a slight adjustment. Luckily I split the model, so now I can get it out of there without removing the piston. I'll have to grind a little recess here for that skirt, the broken skirt to fit. I'm running out of time today, so I'll have to start it up tomorrow. I am optimistic, as I always am. But this time, I can already see that there's much stronger signal at the uh, carb from pumping action in the crankcase. So this should work much better with a reed valve. There's probably a limit to how large you can make the crankcase and still get benefit from it. Versus the opposite of benefits. It certainly makes carb tuning hard. We'll see if this makes it any easier. We'll probably have issues with this being an alcohol carb. 
because the engine is sucking much harder now below the power band and uh, we might have to change out the carb again, we'll see. <laughs> I'm really curious to see how it behaves now with a pretty much normal crankcase volume. Still too large for reed valve, but uh, should be better. We'll see. I'll reset the carb to one and a half turns out on both needles as a starting point. Working much better now, easy to get past that negative hump in the power band and the carb is actually responding to my adjustments. I'm surprised to see that this alcohol tuned carb actually performs well on a normal pump gas on this engine and it's a 35 millimeter carb. <laughs> Our first actual numbers, they're really low and there's a reason for that and that's the same reason that I use the variator instead of the chain drive. You can see my dyno runtime here from where it enters the power band to where it quits. It's a uh, two seconds, maybe less. One and a half, two second runtime on an inertia dyno is uh, far too small of a window to get an accurate reading. We need at least like five seconds, preferably more. Despite its massive transmission loss and quirks and issues, the variator has to go back on. <laughs> Six of my lightest weights installed in the variator and uh, a guest spring tension. Plan is for it to be able to run while the variator is gearing, let it gear out fully and then perform a run. Let's see how it behaves.
We need a launch lever, a foot pedal that can keep the engine from moving and keep the variator from variating until it's in the power band. Forgot what I was going to say. Launch lever. Let's start it up and see what happens. I'll put on my mask again in fear of more brain cells dying. Well, that concludes this video then. I was uh, actually hoping for some more testing, but uh, I found some bits and pieces from the radiator, mostly broken uh, weights and uh, a couple of washers. I'm missing the nut. The nut is a special 14 millimeter weird thread thing. I haven't got taps nor any more nuts of that size, which is a bummer because I'm suspecting my fuel filter is a problem now. And maybe the tank went. Couple of seconds with high throttle openings under load and uh, it seems like the carb is running out of fuel. I think this is a problem. Maybe too restrictive. Could also be dirt in the carb. Should pull it apart and uh, clean it. Next time. Found these parts all over the garage. So uh, I'll have to do a major cleanup to find that nut. I'm planning on doing a live stream for patrons on Sunday. I actually plan on trying to do that every week now. And we can discuss what's been going on in the latest video. Seems like a nice perk for patrons. Future is looking brighter than ever though. See you next time.